What is up, everybody, and welcome to the very first box opening of War of the Spark on the It Resolves channel. I am very, very excited to be opening this today. This is sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. They're a fantastic local store in South Carolina. Uh, I highly recommend checking out their Facebook group, and uh, if you are uh, planning to pre-release and you're in the area, I would highly suggest checking them out as well. They will be doing the full pre-release gambit this weekend, uh, and I'm honestly really, really excited about it. I'm I'm hopefully going to be there on Friday uh, today, obvi obviously, and uh, hopefully be able to, to at least record a little bit of the pre-release and hopefully do some promo material for them as well. So I am really excited about that, but more excited right now about opening up this set. So I really, really like this set. Uh, I think the Planeswalkers in every pack uh, initially I was really excited for. I then got very unexcited for them uh, when they started releasing them because uh, they kind of devalued stuff just by putting things at the, the uncommon level and all that stuff. But uh, having practice drafted with this a number of times now, I can honestly say I really like the new Planeswalkers. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun just to be able to uh, always kind of be able to pull a Planeswalker. You're, you're always going to be able uh, as an option in your first pick to find a planeswalker and sometimes they're going to be really really good so uh it is in my opinion going to be a very fun set uh actually parker and i uh when i went over to pick these up parker works over at grand slam uh and as i was picking these up we, we were we were actually discussing how uh different the sealed environment is actually going to be because of these planeswalkers uh being in every single pack and there we go our first one is samut uh, I'm going to keep Planeswalkers to the side as well, but we do have our first rare Casualties of War and Jaya's Greeting. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, so I I think that he's right. It, it really switches up the sealed pool because uh, for passive abilities alone, there's going to be a lot of things that you kind of have to play around uh, just in terms of, you know, abilities like Samut, a good example. Uh, all your creatures have haste. In this case, anytime you play a creature uh, with power four or greater, you draw a card. It's just such great passive abilities uh, that I think it's going to be really fun uh, to see how this pans out in sealed. I also think draft in particular, that's what I've been kind of practicing, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. Um, I think that the archetypes are fairly clear. Uh, I don't think I was a little worried about that in this set to be honest, but I actually think they're working out really really well We have Sahili actually really excited for Sahili in modern a lot of people have been talking about that uh, and then spark double as our rare um, But I do think uh, it's just it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think the archetypes are pretty clear I think that it's gonna be a uh, a really good draft environment It's gonna be one that's a little bit different than anything else that we've seen before which I'm really excited about as well and uh, Ashiok, another really, really good modern uh, staple, I think, honestly, upcoming staple, just because this turns off uh, fetch lands, which is great. Uh, really, really excited about that. And then Solar Blaze as our rare. Um, and so, I don't know, I think it's going to be an interesting environment. I think that we're going to see a lot of uh, people kind of forcing the Planeswalker thing. And I don't really think that you have to. I think it's just going to happen naturally. We did get uh, the Wild Crafter here. And then we have Mizium Tank as our rare in this one. Uh, I don't think that you have to force it. I think that uh, you'll naturally be able to tell when the Planeswalkers are good and when they aren't. Uh, I've noticed in a lot of cases, I don't find myself always taking the Planeswalker right off the bat. Uh, I find myself looking at other cards first, Davril, uh, and then enter the God Eternals. I actually think this is gonna be a really good card as well. Uh, and so, I, I don't know, uh, well, Again, that kind of devalues the Planeswalkers. It does add a whole new twist that we are going to have to account for when you're building decks. I think uh, part of what I've been reading about, especially uh, Obnixilis, another good one, uh, and then Time Wipe as our rare. Uh, a lot of people have been saying, you know, normally you don't really plan for Planeswalkers in Draft and in Sealed and things like that, but obviously you're going to have to in this instance, especially in Sealed. Uh, if you're pre-releasing, you're going to get a minimum seven Planeswalkers, which is kind of insane. Narset is our Planeswalker here, and then we have Sterev, uh, the Lich. Uh, and so you're really going to have to account for Planeswalker removal, uh, and in one way, I think that that uh, kind of overvalues flying creatures, which is something, again, that Parker and I were talking about. 
Uh, Nahiri is super, super fun. I like Nahiri a lot. And then Naheb, also pretty cool rare. Uh, no Mythic so far, which is a little weird. Um, but anyway, uh, I think that values flyers pretty heavily. I think that we're going to see a lot of decks that are going to need flyers just to be able to poke through damage to either the opponent or Planeswalkers the opponent controls. I think that's so, so important. Samut, another one there, and then another Stareb. That's interesting. Um, and so I think we're going to see a lot more people playing just flying strategies a little bit more often. Uh, I know in a lot of past sets, you really you kind of were either in flyers or maybe you had one or two but you didn't necessarily have to have them to be really really good i think in this instance you will to ferry a really really good planeswalker and then our first foil planeswalker huatli the sun's heart that's pretty exciting as well this is honestly one of my least favorite of the new planeswalkers but it actually makes for some fun strategies i think uh we've already got the uh card and i can't remember the name of it in the last set uh that basically switch power and toughness and all that stuff and I think that uh, there might be a little fun uh, kind of jank strategy out of something like that. Uh, Karn, another really really good one. I'm super excited to have that. Oh and then a foil rare, uh, Fibblethip the Lost. I actually really love this card. Most of you uh, probably saw on our Instagram uh, we did the adventures of Fibblethip for just a little bit. I actually stopped that solely because they announced Fibblethip. Uh, in this set, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, but I I actually really enjoyed doing that little series where we basically photoshopped him into different environments on different planes, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Vraska, and then Parhelion 2, pretty awesome. Uh, and then we actually have Gideon's Triumph as a foil as well. We've already gotten a few uh, foils, which is pretty exciting. Still no Mythic, which is weird. Uh, actually, again, uh, talking to Parker, he was mentioning that he was opening up a box just for the store, uh, and he was mentioning that in 15 packs, I think, he only got one Mythic, which is kind of insane to me. Uh, Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, uh, pretty awesome one there. Uh, which is a little weird, like, it was kind of surprising. I thought that, uh, you know, it's a standard set, so I expect to get maybe minimum four. Uh, but he only seemed to get uh, one in 15 packs, which is pretty insane, over almost half the box. Uh, Angrath. And then our first mythic here is the Raised Boar. I actually really like this card. This is part of a cycle. Uh, there's one, I believe, for each color. The other ones are the uh, old gods, but reincarnated basically as the Dread Horde. Uh, this one, I think, is really, really cool. Very, very excited about that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, long story short, uh, I'm kind of hyped with this set more so than I thought I would be, uh, especially after drafting it a little bit. I've found that it is a lot of fun. Arlen, surprisingly okay in draft. I actually really didn't like Arlen at first. Uh, and then Awakening of the V2 Ghazi is also in there. Uh, but it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, I like the ability to do all these sort of passive things. Uh, and I actually think there's a lot of just like lockout cards that are going to stall the game a little bit, which is, I think, going to be pretty fun. Sahili, and then uh, one of the cards that a lot of people were talking about, Bolas's Citadel. A lot of combo potential there. Pretty excited to uh, actually open that one. Uh, Sahili was one of the big ones, though, for modern that a lot of people were talking about solely because uh, it's sort of a more expensive, but obviously potentially better uh, young Pyromancer. And I think that's really, really sweet. Uh, I love the Young Pyromancer, so I'm super excited to have that. Soren, really love the art for this Soren. Uh, it's not my favorite uh, Soren Planeswalker that we've ever had, but it is definitely a cool art uh, style. Uh, also, I do want to mention, uh, I believe Grand Slam, from my understanding, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I do believe I'm safe in saying that, ooh, Tamiyo, also really good. Uh, they will be getting the Japanese booster boxes out, so a lot of you probably already know uh, they did alternate art for the Japanese boxes, uh, which is really, really cool, uh, but it obviously is usually going to be inaccessible to a lot of people, uh, which I don't like so much. Dovin, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and then Tulsimir, I hope I'm saying that correctly, but I really like this card a lot. It's a fun one. Uh, but I do believe Grand Slam is going to get their hands on some of those Japanese boxes. Uh, I know I will probably try and pick one up. Uh, and if I do, I'm going to uh, obviously do a box opening on it just because there is alternate art. And I think that's really exciting. Uh, Nissa, who shakes the world. Such a good title. Uh, but um, obviously that's going to be uh, probably a little later on. I think uh, that's not going to be able to happen until... 
most likely next weekend uh, at earliest, if I had to guess. Uh, I'm kind of fast going through all these commons just because not super that that important. Uh, Kazmina is a really cool one. Uh, and then Widespread Brutality. Still only one Mythic. Uh, we're almost two thirds of the way through the box and we've only gotten one Mythic. Uh, that's kind of insane. Uh, hopefully we actually get to our threshold of four. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be a normal thing. I mean, again, this is only out of two boxes. Uh, Ajani the Great Hearted, a really, really good draft card. Uh, but I mean, in two boxes, uh, as far as you know, Parks or Parker, excuse me, opening up his and only getting one in 15 packs, and then so far we've only gotten one. That's kind of a little interesting. Uh, we'll say another Wild Crafter and then another Dreadhorde Arcanist. I think that's our second one of those. Uh, we are rounding out into our last third of the box here. Uh, again. I just want to give you guys some tools, uh, another Kazmina, and then uh, Deliver onto Evil. I love the art for this card. A lot of people are talking about it. It's super, super nice. Uh, something that I would highly, highly recommend uh, for anybody looking to either pre-release or uh, just draft even, uh, which if you're not doing either of those things, what are you doing, honestly? But uh, the Wanderer, really, really cool. And then Krinko, nice. Love that. And Obnixilis's Cruelty is our foil there. Uh, but if you're looking to do any of that stuff, before the set comes out, you can do this literally anytime. Uh, I've been doing this as like a build up throughout the week uh, to opening up this set, which is cool. I think that, yeah, we just got this, but whatever. Uh, roll Reversal and then Arlen's Wolf. Uh, but you can actually go to, there's a lot of different tools for this. Draft Sim is a good one. Uh, I also really like cardsphere.draft.com, uh, which is a really good tool for just testing out drafting. I believe uh, tip hold, oh wow. Uh, and then our second uh, Ralesque uh, Apex Hybrid, I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is actually a really cool card. I like that one a lot, but that's our second mythic and we're on our last third. Uh, but anyway, a lot of good tools out there for you to actually practice draft with. Uh, before you get into a pre-release environment, it might actually be a good thing for you to try that. Uh, Chandra Fire Artisan, also great. Uh, I know Draft Sim as well also offers sealed pools that you can draft, or, or excuse me, that you can build from. Uh, and so if you're looking to pre-release or you're looking to do more sealed stuff, that might be a good way to do it. Oh, that's interesting. So we got Ral Storm Conduit, and then as our foil, we got Ral Storm Conduit. That's really funny, actually. Uh, I don't think that's ever happened to me before where I've gotten the same rare as the foil. That's really cool. Uh, but anyway, it, it's a really, really good tool. I highly, highly suggest doing that uh, just for anybody, honestly. Uh, Hwatli, again, and then our third mythic, Niv Mizzet Reborn. This is one of the least playable cards in my opinion. It's really, really cool. Uh, the story, like the lore behind it's pretty fun, uh, but unfortunately the card itself being five color is just kind of a little too unrealistic, we'll say. <clears throat> uh, but we do have the last few packs coming out here, so uh, Domri. I like Domri actually. I think he's pretty good. And then Sky Theater Strix as our foil. We've gotten a number of foils, but we still are short on the mythics. Still kind of kind of red flag there, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so really, really excited. Kaya again, and then Soul Diviner. Really interesting card, Soul Diviner. I don't, I, I think it has potential in Constructed probably, but uh, elsewhere, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, let's see. We have another Tibalt, and then Tomik. This is an interesting card. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where that pans out. Last two packs here, guys. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this box opening. Again, a huge, huge thank you to Grand Slam Jaya. I love Jaya, actually. I know it's a little slow. Uh, and then Silent Submersible. Again, though, seriously, huge thanks to Grand Slam. Really, really appreciate them providing us with this box. Uh, Again, please check out their Facebook group down below. Uh, join it, come play uh, this weekend if you're interested in doing so. Definitely, definitely recommend it. Ignite the beacon and then martyr for the cause. So we did come up short uh, in terms of mythics a little bit. I was expecting to get at least four. We only got three. 
Uh, we did get the Razor, we got Nib Mizzet Reborn, and then the Apex Hybrid. And then, of course, our giant stack of uh, Planeswalkers here. That honestly feels really good. Uh, for anybody that's been playing for a while, you know how awesome it is to open a Planeswalker. Now you get to do that in every single pack, and I think that's really exciting. Obviously, it devalues things a bit, but uh, I do think it's really fun. So, guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this box opening video. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I am going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next box opening video.